I am Fang. I kill bad people. I don't understand who is bad and who is not. It's been a while since you've seen Lloyd, but he's finally getting another ult. Fallen Lloyd is Lloyd resurrected as a morph, and now that Nurgle's in the game, we can start getting the whole gang together. Despite being one of the first Grand Hero battle units, Lloyd's had to wait in line while his brother debuted in Fae with a refine and got his second version last year. He's had to wait quite a bit, but Fallen Lloyd's got a lot good going for him. As a unit, he's once again a Sword Infantry unit. For stats, Lloyd has 41 HP, 43 attack, 46 speed, 31 defense, and 32 res, attack super boon. For reference, the fastest Swordmaster type units have 47 speed, so Lloyd is definitely in a good spot stat-wise. He's pretty similar to Female Lear, just throwing his extra BST into resistance. For journalists, speedy builds, perhaps with say Distant Counter, Fallen Lloyd can fill that rope just fine. As usual, our Fallen Grand Hero battle unit gets a unique weapon, and Lloyd has the Dead Wolf Blade, 60 might sword with another plus 3 speed. If every turn, if above 25% HP, Lloyd game give full penalty doubler to himself and allies within two spaces. At the same time, Lloyd inflicts minus 7 speed and defense debuffs on the closest foe, which then spreads to other foes within two spaces of that. For combat, if above 25% health, Lloyd gets plus 5 to all stats, he gets even more stats equal to 15% of his speed from start of combat. In addition, he has 40% DR for first attacks with an S, and inflicts guard on the foe. Right off the bat, Lloyd provides Lord Nurgle with another status to use, and it's a pretty damn good one at that. Similar to Ursula's Desperation status, we've seen Full Penalty Doubler around before, but I think this is the first time it's available as a passive buff for allies. Isidore and Tarandra have this status, but you need to use their assist skills. Lloyd just stands around his team, and they can get this very good status effect. As the name implies, if the foe is Field Debuffs, you inflict the same amount in combat to simulate doubling the penalty. Dead Wolf Blade inflicts minus 7 speed and defense, and this has infinite range until it hits the closest foe. Once that happens, it spreads to nearby foes as well. The Arcane Threema Axe has a similar effect, but it has Sabotage built into the weapon. Do keep in mind that Foe Penalty Doubler only uses debuffs on the foe you are fighting. The Sabotage status does the same thing, but you can also use debuffs from nearby foes. Phil Penalty Doubler is a pause stats for your team, Sabotage is a negative stats on the foe, this means they do in fact stack. For Arcane Threema, it's built in Sabotage effect, also stacks. What I'm getting at is that you really want to pair Lloyd with a Sabotage status debuffer, we have a lot of those. Just to name a few, for Refines, Fallen Julia, Kyria, Flame Emperor, and Duo Makaya, these are all not that old. For old or for other units, Tea Time Lysithia, Duo Mark, and for the future, Mid Hogger also has it on her weapon. The new Azura has the tier 4 cantrip, that and snag form like sabotage. Then there's Legend and Camilla, who needs no introduction. If the enemy cannot neutralize Debos, then with Phil Penalty Doubler and Sabotage, that could be minus 21 speed and defense just from Lloyd. Now, this isn't even Lloyd's only stat advantage. Dead Wolf Blade grants a bonus to all stats, scaling off flat speed. With merges, Lloyd can easily hit 54 flat speed, which will add to the base plus 5, can get him plus 13 to all stats. If the debuffs start stacking, things get out of hand real fast. Lloyd's very stat focused unit, which is nice, but you do also want combat to perks. This weapon has 40% DR that will work on the first two brave hits as well, plus you get guard. Overall, just from a support aspect, Lloyd offers something no other unit does passively. Generally, you're going to need to act to get Bow Penalty Doubler. The devs seem to think Fallen Lloyd's pretty decent because his base kit has a very spicy skill. Dragon Fang and Attack and Speed Ideal 3 are classics, but Lloyd is walking in here with a Dodge B skill, Repel 3. If you outspeed by 10 or more, you can get up to 40% DR. Repel is the knockback dodge, meaning you can push the foe back one space after combat. Generally speaking, I'd probably say Repel is one of the weaker dodge skills. For one, if you KO the enemy, nothing happens, knockout doesn't matter. Two, if there's a foe behind Lloyd's target, they aren't going to get pushed back. This ain't engaged, we don't get any break bonuses for knocking a target into something. Knocking back a foe is also incredibly niche in Fae. Lunge and drag back can bring foes out of formation. Close calls hit and run can allow for retreating, kind of like a makeshift Kanto. Generally, this is why dodge skills with the in combat effects are more common. Spurn, Velocity, Frenzy, technically buffer. Regardless, first time we've seen a free-to-play dodge skill, if you want to make a speedy inventory build, you can get access to a 40% tier option now. With all his potential stat advantages, Lloyd having dodge for his base kit is already pretty awesome. If you plan to merge up Lloyd, for the neutral nature he's going to get plus 1 HP, attack and speed, no problem with that. Since Dead Wolf Blade has a flat plus 3 speed boost and lots of bonus speed, you could opt for that attack super boom. Speed is a fickle stat though, so an extra couple points never hurts. 
Have a unique weapon with a pretty rare buff for the team already makes Fallen Lloyd a standout, but let's see his stats compared to the other free-to-play options. We don't get a ton of Heroic Girls Sword Infantry, but the last three are all decently fast. Last year's Numera is a perfectly solid Swordmaster, she has more physical bulk than Lloyd, while a little slower. Host is the slowest of the bunch, but he has higher physical bulk. You then got Yan Fei, who has high HP, good defense, and decent res, but sacrifices damage. He does have a distant counter plus dodge weapon, but is that enough over, say, Lloyd just running his own DC skill? Host's sword has bonus doubler, but I honestly don't think it grants more stats over Lloyd's 15% speed scaling. You would need way higher field buff values than the standard plus 6. Now, Host's weapon also has guard. For Lumera, I honestly think Lloyd is kind of just better. Lumera also has guard for her weapon, but has 40% dodge. She needs to win a speed check, while Lloyd just has 40% DR for burst attacks. Lumera's dodge will apply to AoEs and follow-ups, but ideally Lloyd should outspeed and use no fob to not get doubled. Lumera has a true damage effect for her weapon, but it's the same 15% scaling just in combat. This is not going to be that much higher than the extra attack Lloyd's getting, and he also gets extra speed, defense, and res. All of this doesn't even include Lloyd's bow penalty double support and speed and defense debuffs. For something like Arena, even if Lloyd gets a bit outgunned, he can contribute to his team. For the free-to-play standards, I think Fallen Lloyd is definitely top tier. In terms of demoted sword masters, we got three new options, or newer options in the past year. Kagetsu, Inigo, and Lapis are all pretty fast, and I would say Lloyd is most similar to Lapis stat-wise with that higher res focus. While demoted units are free-to-play friendly, you still need to battle RNG. Ask me how many Lapises I've got over the past year. I could probably plus 10 Lloyd before I finish my Lapis merge project. Now with Dragonflowers, Gi is also pretty fast and has high HP if you want to do something with that. Obviously, well, someone like Kagetsu technically is faster, we just discussed how solid Lloyd's weapon is. I think the main difference will come down to how much a build is affected by lack of slaying. That is something Lloyd will need to play around. For general playstyle, Fallen Lloyd just needs to be above 25% health, and he's going to provide foe penalty doubler for his team, while inflicting minus 7 speed and defense debuffs to utilize. These debuffs have infinite range until it hits someone, and then spreads out two spaces. On top of the potential minus 14 uh, speed and defense, Dead Wolf Blade gives Lloyd a base plus 5 to all stats, and then more stats scaling off his flat speed. With merges or field buffs, Lloyd can easily get into the 50s easily, 54 speed will tack on another plus 8 to all stats. He pairs all of these stat advantages with 40% DR for first attacks and guard. With attack and speed ideal, full penalty doubler should keep the skill active. Repel is another 40% dodge DR source. If fully active, that's 64% damage reduction on a free unit. As per usual, any speed entry wants no follow-up if possible. With all his bonus stats, Lloyd has an easier time with the Sacred Seal version. You could run self buffs like O3 in the C slot. For whatever reason, if you think 4% TR is enough, you could also run no follow-up in the B slot, or maybe something like a link buff. Just tack on more stats for your whole team. While Dragon Fang is nice, personally, I would go with something on a lower cooldown. If you do want to go big, try Brett Sacred Seal for more aggression, flashing your heavy blade. While we talked about stacking Foe Bounty Doubler with the Sabotage status, you can also add Panic. Panic turns Field Buffs into negative buffs. This allows it to stack with the regular debuffs. If the foe has a plus 6 speed buff that is panicked, they would now have a total of minus 13 speed in penalties. Foe Bounty Doubler would then apply another minus 13 in combat. You could run Panic Smoke 3 from Fallen Linus, but preferably a unit who can apply Panic without fighting would be a best. For premium builds, Lloyd will need to deal with lack of slang that most Vice units will have. Now, if you have Emblem Marth, you can solve that problem. We have a lot of standard Swordmaster Speedy M3 builds with slang, Vital Astro plus Times Pulse, Galley Reflexes with Buffer. You could change or you could charge no quarter in one action if you got a cooldown perk. Without Marth, all of these specials work fine, just less consistent. Vital Astra is probably the easiest to work with since you can potentially still proc it with, say, Pledge or a Breath Sacred Seal. While the pre charge part for extra DR is going to be pretty tough to get without other allies, it's still a fantastic special for fast units just for the damage part. Besides extra cooldown, Lloyd can further play into a stat focus weapon by running Bonus Doubler. It's a risk, but enemies can neutralize debuffs as well. It's just that when they do not do that, then that's when things can get out of hand. We can double debuffs on the foe, double field buffs on Lloyd. Pledge or Oath 4 are great for self buffing. You could also run Distant Bonus Doubler as an A skill, otherwise, any DCA skill plus Bonus Doubler seal work too. You could also swap that around now. Feel free to stack a Bonus Doubler status as well. Why not? Now, to go with any build, try to get no fallout somehow. With the tier 4 B skill version, you can get half DR piercing, which is always valuable. 
Another option is Infantry No Follow. This can help Lloyd buff other teammates, plus everyone can now take advantage of Lloyd's speed debuffs. Another nice perk to have is Tempo, preferably the tier 4. No special charge plus guard from Dead Wolf Blade, potentially can stall an enemy special. You add a cooldown scope to pair with no guard. As a stat heavy melee unit, Lloyd has a lot of options if you have access to other support skills. Unity can handle Devos on himself, Hexblade if you want to team up with Lord Nurgle or a searching green haired mage. Well, Dodge 4 is great. Potent just has 30% DR without any speed checking. You can also just go full Bruiser with Gambit 4 and Aether. It's great until percent DR gets pierced. With Unpierceable and Flat DR being all the rage, Lagoo's Friend and Godly Reflexes are options. For some other fun perks, Textbook 4 is pretty good. We can add, we can double the attack debuffs in enemy phase, and then you get that one fall denial. For any build, you can simulate slaying with times pulls, but looping and recharging specials may not be as smooth. If you don't need light to fight often, pulse up can just get him to whatever special eventually. Feel free to go for more supportive skills too. Builds can vary a ton depending on who else you pair on the team. Should you promote Fallen Lloyd to 5 stars? We have no shortage of sword infantry, but Lloyd has competitive attack and speed for the modern age, and his demons from Rez are more balanced for fighting everyone. This is good because Lloyd's Dead Wolf Blade is a very stat focused weapon. It can easily grant plus 12, plus 13, or more to all stats, and has an infinite range speed and defense debuff that will hit the closest foe and spread out. Lloyd then gives his whole team full opponent doubler, which I don't believe any other unit can hand out without acting. It also is not that common. To take full advantage of Lloyd's support, try to get attack and res debuffers on your team if you got magic damage users, and try to get sabotage and panic on the enemy. Panic synergizes with Faux Pounty Doubler, and sabotage is just better Faux Pounty Doubler acting as a negative status. Of course, Devils can be neutralized, so Lloyd may struggle if that happens. His weapon has 40% DR and guard, which are good, but you definitely want other perks, such as no fall up, cooldown, or DR piercing. If you don't plan to use Lloyd, he comes with our first free to play dodge B skill. Repel's secondary effect isn't really a huge sell for me, but maybe you have a tactic in mind for that. Regardless, if you want, you can slap this B skill on other budget builds, for example, the No Blade Plus with no follow-up. In the end, Fallen Lloyd definitely is a top tier free-to-play unit. Other free-to-play Swordmasters can do fun things with Arcane Devourer, but Lloyd brings his own uniqueness and can support his team. He is the first Gen 8 Heroic Grail sword imagery, which should raise his value for things like Arena. There are some solid demo sword units, but again, RNG is cruel if you want merges. For the long term, melee imagery always get fun new skills to try, and Lloyd's stats give him many flexible build options. Builds can also change with your teammates. For example, Legendary Camilla has pretty good value for Lloyd. You get the half gear piercing, and then she debuffs foes with speed, res, and sabotage. That's just one example. Let me know your thoughts on Fallen Lloyd, and good luck getting him. After all these years, they finally gave the Fangs some justice. Too bad it also came with the spooky scary purple smoke. That's all I got for this video. Another Fallen Banner, another decent Fallen Grand Hero battle unit. Next up, we're going to be going over this one's Ephemicon manuals. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.